Hey, my lovers, it is Miss Diva here for the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and for always listening and supporting. The, le- the listens have been phenomenal. Um, we were looking at the numbers on Block Talk Radio. We think that is amazing. And um, so we had, at the time that we did that, it was 60,000. So it is the goal to bring it to 60,000 again and that took a while to do so we are not in any rush at all but we're just always appreciative and feel like I didn't say it enough (laughs) on air um and it it takes a lot and it takes a village to make it happen and it takes a lot um and I did not say that enough so I will say this speaker you make it happen I appreciate you um google podcast apple podcast spotify iheart radio YouTube. If you follow the links on Facebook, that helps Facebook that they allow that. If you follow it on Twitter, that's amazing. Some of you listen via the after. You often listen on Instagram stories and sometimes the Snapchat stories. So thank you so much to follow me on social media. M-Z-D-E-E-V-A, the number four Y-O-U. So thank you for following that on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat. And for following on Facebook, of course, hashtag Diva. So, let's just get right into it. Now, a lot of my followers are, are um, lucky is not a fair word, so I'm using it loosely, enough to be able to keep up, keep up with me on a real intimate basis. And some of them are on Facebook, so they know more than all of you that listened and tuned in last week, Right? So, or earlier this week, we should say, since it was a Sunday. But they understand more why this topic is imperative. Um, And I say that because they were able to witness the topic from last week, how that just out of nowhere became my story. And um, not to say that I have not experienced it before, because this is not a facade ever on my show. It's authentic. So not to say that I have not experienced it before in life. And if you are followers closely and you read the books, then you already know this. So that's just not, you know, you know better. But not to say even in this relationship with Honey and I, that it was not something that had happened. So for the listeners to the Honey and I show, just pause is all I can tell you. Just pause. Um, I'm probably going to go in there and do an update just to not leave them hanging. But just give me a minute. Again, if you're not following on social media, um, the Facebook, um, you probably are like, you really are less aware of what happened. So, and it is my job to make sure that I bring you the topics. And I can't break you down, um, but at the same time, I'm human. So we're going to go through the show with my obligation to the platforms that require me to do the show. So I'm going to make sure that I follow through with my obligation because I have goals. I've been working at this a long time and life can't distract me from the journey that it has me on now. So I push through, you know, is where I'm at right now. So you guys can follow um, the page on Facebook under just hashtag Asteva. That's exactly the name of the page. Hashtag a S K D E V A D E E V A. Sorry, I always do it fast and they say I didn't hear you. Hashtag A S K D E E V A. That's all lowercase. That is on Facebook. So you of course probably saw the video for those. I'm gonna start talking to those that saw that. Um you probably saw the video where my um fiance at the time <laughs> Or we don't even know where where we have how we don't know where to title that right now. I don't have posted up um, that he cheated and that he broke my heart. And he had did a video and then came back and did another video where I came over and I had something to say on day one where I was just angry, um, accused of being psychotic, but. I was angry. Um, I did want to remove it, but apparently the person that called me psychotic um, reported the video, so it's kind of up, you know, because when you're angry and you're hurt, you say a lot of things, and the family member felt like 
the best way to do that was probably to report it and it's whatever. I was angry. I was upset. I have not hurt this man. You saw him come to life on Facebook today. If you're, you know, like I said, in that circle. And so, you know, that I haven't done anything. The things that I did say, I was in pain. And day two, just trying to understand what happened, you know, 24 hours. You you guys, if if I can survive this, I will write it. And I'll break it down and I'll explain it. I just need to survive it. And I need to understand it. Because everything that I've ever given you guys in life has always been months later, years later, where I was able to write it to you and explain it and then tell you the lesson that I learned. So I'm learning a lot more this time around just because I did not hold it to myself. I reached out to a huge community of people who were able to inbox me and share their wisdom share their thoughts, share their stories. Um, I had phone calls and texts. I was able to cry and, you know, um, talk it out and hear some things, just, you know, eye-opening things, enlightening things. Um, so much was said that, oh, I'm going to try to give a lot of what, just where they are helping me at now. So we're going to call this part one. I'll go back and edit the title because uh, it's just so much. So we will just call this part one on this topic. But we're going to talk about topic today. After they cheat, you need to be willing to hear the why. You need to be he- willing to hear the why. And I I can honestly say if they're, you know, being 45 years old and having experienced this numerous of times in relationships since first dating early um, dating years, you know, that I can say that there are some things that I learned and that this one particular thing about listening to the why was not something that I did have or that I did understand clearly in the past. And so were there relationships that could have been salvaged from really amazing people like the people that I've gotten in relationships with that were really good and had potential they you know when they when the cheating happened um I didn't understand it and so I had to listen I never stopped to listen to the why just went off went off and you know upset and hurt and break it off and it's done runaway bride my name everyone knows it running away bride is what I do so um often in I don't think there's a relationship where a man hasn't proposed or told me about marriage or looking forward to it. So I've never been in anything that didn't want to go the long term, you know, but that doesn't mean that I've only been with one or two people. The unfortunate truth about that is I've had multiple relationships. So um, they always wanted to go to marriage, but then this thing happens and I run because I am not okay with cheaters. I, I don't advocate myself to be an open relationship person so because I'm not advocating for open relationship I'm loyal I'm trustworthy I want that same thing in return and being able to learn in this incident a video that was shared with me by a phenomenal human being out of California and um, he shared something and then something registered with me that was said and then a bunch of people gave a bunch of enlightenment and really something that really stood out to me by a friend and a sister in Virginia and so so, you know there's a lot like this will probably be part one part two part and whoever as I go through it because last week I brought this to you guys for those who are tuned in now and did not know what happened last week I apologize if I didn't open the, the chat so break 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 um give me a moment i did not um open the chat um okay so all right so the live chat is open you guys i apologize so the live chat is now open um over on facebook um Everybody's used to the pause. They probably have some jams. And we're going to get the music going as soon as we can get the DJ. 
So reach out to your G- DJs. Um, they understand what I have to have for the podcast and the rules and regulations that go along with that. Instead of just opening up and um, uh, loading up songs, I'm not really allowed to do that with the copyright. Um, I apologize for that break there. So, um, so I have to have a DJ, and so and that would make that that flow better. But I know you guys don't come to me for that reason, and you are less concerned about how perfect this goes because we all have this teamwork that we do, where we know that what I bring to the table when I get started. It's something that we all get from it, right? Because we walk this journey together. So you remember last Sunday, um, the show was He or She Cheats, What Happens After I'm Sorry. And so we talked about that and we talked about change behavior. And we talked about the necessity of the behavior changing being the only way that success happens after cheating when the person decides to stay. And so without change, I'm talking about almost immediate, obvious change behavior, you know, from transparency, because there's nothing without that, you know, um, from uh, from just making sure that you're doing the right thing without the person needing to babysit. So, you know, here with me, with Diva, it's I don't want to need to take the time to check your phone i've been there in relationships with that in the past in life and it just doesn't do anything it doesn't do anything so checking the, your phone is not something I, I, that i'm capable of doing you know in the in this most recent relationship in my engagement i can't do it i don't want to check your phone i want you to be able to go out there and do what you're supposed to do because every time that i've had to come at you about your phone it's never brought me anything good so i don't want to check your phone you need to just go out there and do what you're supposed to do being responsible being transparent being where being where you say you are and going where you're supposed to go that is respectful to your relationship and knowing who to hang out with and um, knowing better who 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 you should be around. You know, you're, you're not a child. And you know the type of people and the things that keep you on the right tra- track and you know the things that distract you. You are not a child, right? So with that being said, that's, you know, we talked about that. So change behavior and all that. We talked about that last week. So we'll probably come back and do a part two. Um, on that one also, but he or she cheats. What happens after? I'm sorry. Um, we the main thing that we brought forward was change behavior, and so I only add to that show to say um, from last week. I add to that to say I I will add and say transparency. Okay, and so tonight's topic where we are talking about this more personal. Because it's now me, I'm going to tell you just from how what I got from it, right? And so after they cheat, be willing to hear the why. So I did not understand this on Tuesday. So you can trust and believe when it came to Brent. I did not want to hear the why. Did I don't want to hear the why. Why did you do this? And and then he starts talking and I'm off on a, on a tangent. I'm gone. I'm gone. You know, and just I'm, I'm loud. I'm cursing. I'm mad because I don't want to hear it. So when people say, I did, I did, I said that, listen, no, well, if you went off and you're yelling and then you went all crazy and he's trying to talk and all that, you didn't try to listen, but it's a matter of getting face to face, facing each other and listening and saying, I know that this is going to hurt me. And I don't know. I don't know. Like, we're going to talk about that in a minute about when, you know, what you should do that um that part where they try to force you to stay if you're staying or leaving kind of thing um we will talk about that in a minute but just being face to face and saying look I don't really know what I'm going to do and if I'm staying or if I'm going but I, I want to hear from you what happened was it me am I not cute enough am I not small enough am I, what is it about me that made it happen and if if it's about me be truthful and just say it just say it just say it because if it's about me you know be truthful and so his first answer as you guys you know saw on the video on facebook was like it was an opportunity well opportunities knock every day we 
choose. Because life is about choices. You were you were give you were gifted with the the uh, ability to make your deci- decisions, right? So life is about the choices that you make. So you are gifted with the ability to make all the right ones. You are gifted with the ability to understand that you will make mistakes, but you know that your aim should always be for making the right um, choices when positive or negative opportunity presents itself, right? So. But um, we begin to get to the why. And so where I'm at right now, and it just kind of just stops right there, um, because this is my, I just found out about this affair on Tuesday, right? So I just, it's too soon to give you guys like all the, yep, and this is going to happen and that, and then you're going to feel like this and that, it, because it's so much like, you know, up and down going on with it. The emotions are all over the place. I'm happy, I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm hurt, I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm sad. You know, like it's all over the place. And um, a lot of crying in the first 24 and a half hours, you know. Um, So it's it's, it's a lot. So you're really not making rational choices. Um, That is something that I wish someone had told me um, at the beginning when my husband was killed in war in 2004. To just take your time because... In that beginning, first two to three years, you're not making rash, rational choices. And um, buying the home was something that was suggested to me. But I really, you know, it, I'm not going to say it wasn't a great choice because it was everything for me that I needed to do. But I needed to have a lot more knowledge um, in that way learning about the repairs and the warranties and things like that that are needed, you know, over the years and decade of having the home. And um, I, I had it for 10 years. 10, um, no. Let's see. <laughs> I had it for 13 years. Yeah, I had my, my first home for 13 years. And so it was a lot. And I made that decision to purchase it months after my husband was killed. So those are kind of things like, you know, wait until you're really in a good place emotionally. And even when it comes to waiting until you're in a good place emotionally, um, it also plays that part when it comes to a possible breakup or getting back together or something happening in the relationship. You need to just make, don't go divorce full fledged without thinking it through, you know, and even though splitting up and taking the ring off is the first thought be- that I had only because I'm experienced enough in how many times that this has happened in relationships over the years to know that I'm not going to just be like not call it off I knew better than to just sit back and allow it to happen to me because we're past that you know I'm 45 he's 46 so we're past living like that but at the same time the permanent decision the permanent decision that's 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 something else right like that takes more time right but um just it takes a lot of time and even in the permanent decision how will I behave after the why after hearing the why how will I behave and will I be able to maintain the things that I learned over the months of what causes this to be something that is repetitive and that kind of thing you know but I will say that in the why that was shared for me right now in my current why I can say that I was not very well with, I I did not do very well with this in the previous relationships where the man stepped out. So when he was, you know, as authentic as he could be in telling me his why, I see in his answer, the answer that I never stopped to be still and listen to in the other breakups I'm actually seeing in his answer wait a minute wait a minute that may have been exactly what caused my other relationship with XYZ to end as well because it's 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 me this is something that I do often and so I will tell tell my listeners this because there's probably women out there it has less to do with 
Um, don't build an insecurity about yourself because there are just some people that are this way and some people that are not, right? I am a lover of love, right? If you betray me, it's, it's in a lover of intimacy and, you know, all those things. But if you betray me, it's very hard to see you the same way. And I'm also going to pull back in intimacy. I'm going to pull back. So, because for me, intimacy is into me, you see. Into me, you see. So, when I allow you into that space and and I make out with you and and I make love to you and I have sex with you, it's intimate. And I've given you so much of me already with that billion dollar Gucci. You know what I mean? Like, that's some billion dollar Gucci. So, I've given it to you, you. And if you go and because of something that I do in all my relationships including in this one I don't change probably until after marriage I will say that Jonathan got the side that they were reaching for but it's not something that I feel women should give until after the marriage but because so many men seek it before to test it test the waters because if it ain't like I like it like that they're gonna go get it somewhere else right so but I don't really give that part of me until after the marriage because now you've gone through everything that it takes to convince me if once you've walked down the aisle Jonathan convinced me before he was killed okay he deserves this kind of you know so the thing is this um I am not buck wild in the bedroom especially after betrayal I'm I'm not even you probably can't touch me after you betray me you probably are not going to be able to be very intimate with me for a long time you're not gonna if you get it I got drunk you know like you and I went out we had drinks and that's you know like it's gonna be really hard in a relationship after you betray me to get some and so that has been something that I've done. And so the breakups that happened were always with someone that stepped out, did something, disrespected me, did something of betrayal. And then I just pull back from that because that's just my, that's sacred, you know. So I pull back from that. I'm already, you know, like there's a lot of chicks that will go from January to December and they'll have like 30 dudes. Some of them have 20, 15, 10. That's not me. That's not me. Even in my single, it's just not me. So in my single, like I had a situation where I was single for a while. And then once I decided that, okay, intimacy is a missing part of me. And so I, who do I trust with this? And so what the guy that I ended up trusting it with was a person that was single. And, you know, he had his thing and he was doing what he did. So we only linked up once a year. So if he flew into town... That's all that it was. And, 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 and then he'd go back to his world and he was in the military. Go back to his world and I'd go back to mine. His world was single for as far as I knew it. And I knew a lot of the women that dated him and things like that. Hell, I think I was over um, at his house um, once in Fort Hood and um, leaving out the door when one of the chicks was coming. And we're like, hey, how are you? Hey, beautiful, how are you? And just left out. Like, it was so peaceful. Because I was single and he was single and that's it. But that's where I wanted my intimacy. And I didn't need it more than once a year. I understand that people do. No matter what's going on. I understand it now from a phone call where um, a great female friend shared with me her relationship. And her side of it and being a cheater herself and having been cheated on and explained to me just how she was and that it's a need that has to be met like in a marriage with her wife it was a need that has to be met it's not negotiable it's not negotiable and so for some that like when I finished talking to him over the last 48 hours I realized that no matter what's going on, this is a need of his. He wants met all um, often. 
So no matter how mad I get, I still need to be able to perform. And so that is a hard request because you're not my husband. And so I'm trying to find out who you are so that I can be able to give you that of me all the time and give it to you on the freak, 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 you know, like I, yeah, I would love to be that because I can do that when I'm the wife, but that is not something you give up as a girlfriend. That's not something you give up as a fiance like that. You know, I'm not telling you that you can't have premarital sex because that's not what I'm saying. But premarital freak? No, 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 no. I'm anti-premarital freak. You know? So, um, men have learned that about me in the relationship. So, when they stepped out and they got it where how they desire it, they left for that. Or, or you know, we just couldn't, we couldn't see eye to eye. You know, like, but I never knew that that's why they left. I just thought you stepped out, you cheated. And I take off running, and now I'm finding out in this one answer of just being still and hearing his why, I now have the answer to all the other whys that I never was still to listen to. Because I was so mad and so angry and so hurt. So, it is imperative after they cheat to listen to their why. Still and quiet. With no reaction. Because when you hear it, it's going to open up answers to you from years. Right? And it also makes sense to me that the marriage proposals, because that's like, everybody wants to marry me. Dang it. Every relationship I get in, the guy wanted to marry me, but he wasn't faithful. But was it everything awesome about you wanting wanting to marry me or was it that once I put a ring on it I could just get up in it, get up in it, get up in it get up in it, what's the mission right so I either helped you or I made things worse um, I'm not sure and I may have even not even made sense to a lot of people I'm going through like I'm just finding out that my fiance was not being faithful and I just found this out on Tuesday once I flew back into Colorado from the Texas trip that I was on you guys when I talked to you guys last on Sunday so it's a lot but I will said I will share with you also what my friend shared with me in Virginia and the enlightenment of it even my son said, Mom, everything that's happening is happening. And it is, it's, you know, supposed to happen. Things do happen. What's the lesson in it? And that's just like, wow. Like the powerful things that I have learned over the years. And then you just hear profound things. And you just go, wow. You know, exactly. You know, I'm always about the lesson in it. The lesson in it. And now I hear it even more. Like, that's why the, the lesson that I got from it is so important and that's why we always have that section in the books what's the lesson so I shared with you guys the lessons on the other situations that relationships that happened in the past so but she said something that was profound out of Virginia and it was like peace is not something that can move around you know, and, and we're always talking about being balanced and peace and we do our meditation, we do our yoga and we do everything we can, you know, as we've been trying to get on this journey of just getting balanced, right? But for my listeners that's been following and trying to get on that journey and we've been looking at Abriola and trying to get these books together with our um, scary, you know, goals that we've been trying to put together and um in these vision boards and vision books right and um she said to get in that place of peace where no one can take it from you so how peaceful are we because it is those challenges that come your way that are going to prove whether or not you're grounded in your peace 
And that's just a paraphrase of how she said it. She said so many jewels that they can only come from her. But it was something that I took. And I was like, that, that part, that part, that, that part. Right? So, am I at peace right now? And what happened? That's a journey. Have I finally gone through enough and understood enough and connected with all the right people that get me in the right place, in the right set of mind to really, really deal with the issues the way that they're supposed to be dealt with that life can bring? I'm in a better place for that. I have a powerful circle that literally just like you could look at a map of the United States and take it from the top and just go all the way around and circle it and go through the middle and you know color it in and that's how many people I have connected in that many different states and then as well as friends overseas and so and they come from different cultures backgrounds environments career fields nationalities and that's powerful. So to be able to have heard from so many in my circle that are in so many different places um, and hearing their words of wisdom, hearing them share their stories, hearing them encourage me, hearing them check up on me, powerful. Um, the negative, it just can't even get on this platform. I'll share it. I have a topic coming up. And um, in the notes, and I'm going to share it about going to look at my notes. People that get off on negativity. So we're going to talk about that. But right now, it's just like if I am getting anything, and in the lesson that I may later forget, and you guys are going to have to remind me, well, hold up, Diva, because you said, you said, and this everything that y'all are going through, and everything that this was with this incident that happened with you and Brent. You said that you would focus on hearing his why and that you were going to do something about, you know, trying to meet that because in every relationship that might have been, you know, no confirmation, but I'm almost positive that his why is also probably why the other relationships had issues. So um, I'm going to have to get your freak on, get, get your freak on, Missy Elliott style, if I'm going to keep a man. You know, and so, um, woo, you know, so sister gonna have to learn how to be a freak. Any hot girl summers anywhere? Like, I'm gonna have to learn some lessons. Y'all gonna have to sit me down and give me all your freak rules because I'm gonna have to be a bona fide freak to make it work, you know. And so, um, all sick jokes aside, it's probably true, you know. And so, you have to listen to the why. Because it'll shock you some. And also, it'll do what it just did for me. And it's just like, wow, wait a minute. That relationship that I had when... And that other... And, you know... So, you guys that have read Great Sex is Not Love and Never Will Be book. You're going through the chapters now. Flip, flip, flip. I see you. I already see you. Your book's on the coffee table. You just picked it up and you're trying to go through the chapters and figure it out. Um, And I kind of want to do the same thing. Like... Oh, oh, you know, and then the one chapter where the chemistry was really good. Oh, that's why they were good. And then we just made our own decision to split. But remember how good we are and how good we were in that chapter? Yeah, exactly. So it's enlightening for me. And I wrote those words, you know. And so I'm still having that moment, that aha moment with hearing that today. So thank you to my West Coast friend. For sharing that with me and um so so many great people and too many people to mention um that have been able to do something in the process so um I don't know I don't really know what to do with it because I'm the loyal one I'm not the cheater and so because I am not the cheater and haven't been the cheater um you know a cheater really almost has to be redefined because like oh you stepped out you had some drinks and then you're drinking and you're at the bar and you fell into the pussy you know and that could happen and then they never seen the bitch again I don't know her name but when the person has been in a full blown 
connection with another person for six months, that's a little different. So that's not a bounce back. That's not a, oop, you had a hall pass. Late hall pass because I had to hand it to you after your ass did it anyway. You know, like, this is not one of those. So, the healing time frame and all that, I have no idea. So we'll come back and do a part two. Who knows when? Um, but we'll see. If um, Remind me if I don't, if you really wanted it. Um, remind me and then I'll come back. So that's it, you guys. Thank you for pushing through with me because we had to push through the obligation to do the podcast. And we did it. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, Spotify, thank you. Appreciate you guys. iHeartRadio, thank you. YouTube, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, thank you. CastBox, Deezer, thank you. Um, if you are listening now behind um, after the show when it's not live, over on Instagram stories, Thank you for doing that also on whichever platform you chose to listen to it on. And for Facebook, for those who clicked on there and you're listening to it later maybe or whatever, thank you. And also the same for you guys on Twitter. So it's the Ask Diva Show. This is real life stuff I gave you guys. Be gentle with it. It's not for gossip. It's for our learning lessons. So you guys can walk through it with me because that's who I am for you, right? So we're changing lives one listener. We're changing lives one reader at a time, including myself. So you guys have a great night.